Hello everyone, I'm Homer White and I'm one of the instructors for Math 111 Elementary Statistics at Georgetown College. This video is an overview of the RStudio environment, which is the primary way in which we're going to interact with the R computing language during this course. RStudio will work for you on a server version, so this is something that comes across on the internet and you'll therefore need a browser. One important thing to know is that the RStudio server does not work on Internet Explorer, but it works on most other browsers, such as Mozilla, or Chrome, or Firefox, or, or Safari. Um, I particularly recommend the Mozilla browser. It uh, provides the tightest integration for the type of work we're going to be doing in this class. So let me open Mozilla right now. Uh, this is their home page, and this is where you might go to download the latest version of Mozilla if you don't already have it on your own computer. As far as getting to the RStudio server, what you're probably going to want to do is to learn how to type in the URL and eventually bookmark it. The URL is rstudio.georgetowncollege.edu. So if you simply put that in to the address, and eventually you will want to bookmark it, then you'll come to a page that looks like this, sign in to RStudio. And you'll sign in starting with your username. This begins with the Georgetown College uh, domain name for the community, which is F-A-S-T, then a backslash, and then your username, which is going to be the same as your Georgetown College email address just before the at sign. So for me, that's H white zero and then you'll be asked to provide your password and this is the same password that you will use to get onto the Georgetown College network so I'll type in my password and then I will sign in what you see at the beginning will be a number of different uh, panes I have four panes. If you have never used RStudio before, you'll probably see only three panes, but we'll get you a fourth one soon enough. My goal in this video is to take you through each of the panes in turn and to show you some of the features of this environment. And I'll begin with the console pane, which is either all of the left-hand side if you have only three panes, or it's the lower left-hand side if you've already done some work on RStudio and you have four panes. Now if you place your cursor after the blue prompt then you'll be ready to enter commands directly into the console. The console is the place where you most directly communicate with R. You can enter commands and some of the output from R is presented to you on the console. Let's just try a very simple command to get started. How about 2 plus 2? So we're adding those two numbers. If we press enter, out comes four. There are certainly more complicated and interesting commands that we'll learn how to enter as the chorus goes on, but that should get us started. Another pane of interest, if we move over to the lower right-hand side, this pane contains several tabs, and right now I've got the Files tab active, and so I'm looking at my home directory. Everybody has their own personal home directory and it's going to have a different look depending on what kinds of folders and files you've decided to add to your home directory. If you're just starting out, you'll probably see very little, maybe an R profile file, and you'll see an R directory, and you won't do anything really with those during the semester. You'll also see a submit folder and a returned folder. And these have been set up for you to make uh, submission and collection and grading of homework very quick and easy. So you'll eventually, not right away, but eventually begin to save homework into the submit folder and then graded uh, copies will be returned to you in this returned folder. We'll take a look at files a good bit more in just a moment. I'd like to move on to plots. So once you've done some work in RStudio, you may have made a graphic or two. 
and if you have they're displayed under the plots pane and if you've made more than one then you can actually scroll back and see the ones that you've made in the past. You can scroll back, scroll forward and if you were to press the zoom key then you could actually enlarge the plot a good bit if you wanted to see more detail. Another another uh, tab that's of interest is the packages tab. R is already um, a sophisticated enough product by itself but it, uh, you have the option of downloading contributed packages that extend its usefulness some of those packages actually come with your initial installation of R. And then we've added a few contributed packages as well on this server version. So you're not going to have to worry about installing any new packages during this course, we believe. But it's good to look at your packages list. And there are two that are going to be very important for you. One is package mosaic. And another is package Tiger Stats, a little further down the list. You want to make sure that the box next to each of these packages is checked. That means that the package is loaded and ready for use in R. Once you've checked those packages, they should remain checked for the rest of the semester for you. We also have the Help tab and this is going to be a useful place to go to learn how to use R functions and also to get more information about data sets that are contained in packages in R. There's a viewer tab as well but we don't think you'll be doing with anything with it during this course. Let's take a look up now at the upper right hand corner and we're now in a pane that includes two tabs, Environment and History. And right now the Environment tab is active. And you're looking at your global environment. I've loaded a couple of things into my global environment. Environment. They happen to be both data sets, one called Attitudes and the other called Math 111 Survey. If I wanted to take a closer look at one of these data sets, say at Math 111 Survey, if I were to just click on it, then over in the fourth pane, the so-called files pane, Math 111 survey appears in kind of the same format that you might see in Excel spreadsheet. Every row corresponds to an individual in the survey and every variable uh, appears in the column. These are the variables that we measured on each individual in the survey. Again, the files pane uh, may have a number of different files open. I have an untitled file called an R script, and we'll do more with those later. And then we have Math 111 Survey, and you can just toggle back and forth between those files. And there are menus up here that uh, are allow you to do things with files, such as save them or to edit them in various ways. And they're very similar in their functions to uh, word processor types of menus that you've worked with before in your life. If we head back to the environment and history pane, uh, one option that you have for your environment is to actually clear it. And you should probably do that about every chapter or so. Uh, once you get the environment big enough and cluttered enough, it's a little hard to find things in it and look around in them. There can also be some confusions in the R code when you have something and someone else doesn't have that same thing in their environment. So it's good to clear it every so often. It's nice to look also at the history tab. The history tab gives you all of the commands you've ever entered on the survey, on the server in R. Uh, so this particular list stretches back into a previous semester. It goes quite a ways. You can search the history if you like using the little search button up here. So for example, suppose you wanted to make a box and whisker plot, BW plot, and you'd forgotten how to do it. Or maybe you typed in a very long command involving box and whisker plots in the past and didn't really want to retype it. You could find it in the history 
Oh, this looks like uh, might be one. And once you've selected your command, you could uh, send it to the console. But the idea is that uh, you can locate things from the distant past using history. Let's go back to the environment pane. I'd like to take you back to the files and to take a little closer look, right now you are in your home directory, but suppose you wanted to access course materials, then you need to go to another place. This is done by looking at the dot dot dot, the ellipses box in the upper right hand corner when you have the files tab active. And if you press that, then you get a little dialog box where you can enter the name for our common folder. Now the name is forward slash MAT111. That's very important to remember. Then if you press OK, you come to the common folder where all of our course materials are stored. This is a folder that everyone can read from, but only certain people, like the instructors, can write to. So you'll see all kinds of different subfolders. For example, there's one that's particular to myself and my class, Dr. White Stuff. And inside that folder, as the semester goes on, you'll find solutions to quizzes and, and homeworks and tests and other helpful materials. And the course syllabus will be there as well. Going back one level by pushing the blue Math 111 button, we could look in some other folders. There's course notes. Let's see what's in there. You'll find various materials again as the semester goes on, but the two most important for you will probably be the PDF and the HTML versions of the course notes. Let's take a look at the PDF first, so we click on it to open it. And quite likely it may open in a separate tab of your Mozilla browser, uh, depending on your operating system and your computer. It may also uh, open simply separately using something like Adobe Reader. But one way or another, if you go to the upper left-hand side, you should be able to find the little toggle sidebar button that will give you a table of contents in a couple of different forms. Right now it uh, shows one page at a time, but if you push this little button here, then you get the outline of the document. You get the chapter and section headings, and so you can navigate anywhere you want. Like you could go to the introduction, or you could go to the second chapter, anywhere you like. So this is probably the most attractive way to read the course notes if you just want to sit and immerse yourself in the text and you don't have a lot of immediate plans to uh, try out or type R commands, but you're working more with uh, concepts and understanding. Let's go back to the server and let's take a look now at the HTML version of the notes. So if I were to open them, I have two options and the option I want to choose is to view in the web browser. So we'll click this and you get the web notes. I should say that if you have not uh, been able to get the to open up either the PDF or the web notes, you should check the top of your browser. It may complain that it doesn't allow the opening of pop-ups, but it will also give you an option to allow pop-ups from the RStudio server, and you should take that option, and then the uh, notes will open for you as you wish. Again, it comes in a separate pane of the Mozilla browser, which is very convenient because you can uh, toggle back and forth between the notes and the RStudio server. There we go, notes, RStudio, notes, RStudio. So heading back to the notes, again, you have a, a scrollable table of contents and you have the notes themselves. The advantage of the HTML version, although it's not as pretty to look at sometimes, is that if you want to copy code, that's very easy to do. So for example, if 
let's just look for some nice complicated uh, piece of code somewhere Yeah, so, so say if you wanted this piece of code here, you simply select, and right click, and copy, and then you could uh, go to the RStudio server and go down into the console and do a control V to paste and then press enter and out will come the output. So when you're practicing seeing what code will do, uh, having that copy and paste ability can be quite convenient and then the HTML version is what you'll want to use. Going back to the files pane, let's again press the blue Math 111 to go up one level and look in one more folder. How about presentations? So along with every chapter will be several presentation documents and these are rather like PowerPoints and they're a good compressed version of the notes. You want to look at them outside of class as well as deal with them inside of class. Let's uh, try uh, presentation chapter two, part one. And let's uh, open this file just by clicking it. It comes up to you in source form in the files window and this is really not terribly readable but what you want to do is press preview and once you press the preview button R is going to rearrange itself and when it emerges it's going to have a new tab in the upper left hand corner called presentation and what you've got is a small version of this PowerPoint like uh, document and you can work your way through it using the usual left and right arrows. There's table of contents, so you can go to particular places and then work forward if you wish. You can always go backward to the table of contents from any section. Um, you can navigate using this button at the top. You can actually go to any particular page that you like. And this is a good way to follow along in class if we happen to be using the same uh, presentation document overhead on the projector. You could follow along in this little tab. Now, if you ever find that the text is too small, say you just decide that's too small, I'd like to see something bigger, then by going to the more and looking at more, we could uh, view in browser and up comes a new pane in the Mozilla browser and you just get a larger version of the same document. Again, anytime you like, you can copy code and then you can enter it over in the console. So that's the basic overview of the RStudio environment and We'll get into more of the actual course material in our next video lecture. Thank you for listening.